day two wheelbase dirt demo here in Staveley and heading out on the expert route on the brand new Mondraker Crafty XR. Full Olin's big battery pleasure. And the big news on this XR is Olin's dampers front and rear and they are dampers in the true sense of the word. Cheers mate. This is a properly planted sure footed stuck down ride field. I mean obviously that alloy frame and that 750 watt hour battery keeping things fairly stuck down anyway but oh sorry with the frame geometry as it is and that big old piggy piggyback on the rear 170 mil fork on the front this is definitely a kind of hench a race feeling set up rather than anything supple and subtle although to be fair small bump response is actually from a car park point of view pretty good but definitely a very purposeful feeling suspension setup and then again you know it's a big bike with big intentions but Despite that dynamic weight, it's classic signature to move from Mondraker. It still feels really agile and alive through that forward geometry. Taking what little bit of low speed compression there was off on the suspension, but this is zero suspension and these Olin's dampers definitely on the sturdy coil side of the damping rig. I mean, glued to the ground, but it's a properly hench feel, front and rear. But the power you're getting through this Generation 4 Bosch CX motor is very impressive. I mean, I'm just cruising up here in Tour Plus. It's more than you need. Certainly if you, you know, navigating a twisty bit of sheep track like this. Ample torque on this. Right, now this is where this suspension package and this handling should really show it straight down toboggan they call this run so embrace the run oh yes big yeah i've softened that fork up a little this feels so locked down it's the alloy frame i've not had a chance to get scales on it so i'll put a weight in the captions but this is so sunk down so grounded with this holding suspension jeez <laughs> i mean this is the xr this is the extra rowdy one longer fork compared to the standard crafty but wow just the way you can hang off the bike but the tracking is still totally on point and then drop it into this little rut here guess what it's why it's called toboggan oh yeah there's obviously a massive tuning potential in this back end but and that means you do need to know your way around the blue and gold dials but now I've got it there hell yeah control on this face is next level considering it feels so kind of tight and pedalable otherwise and the geometry is definitely you know ratted out on this XR model that longer fork Pushes the head angle back, 64 and a half degrees. BB drop isn't that, about that massive. 18 mil. But, feels super planted. 480 mil reach. It's on this large, whole bike just, it's a proper charger. And with that 750 watt hour battery, you can charge for mile after mile it does not care and I know the Bosch smart system hashtag is uphill flow but <laughs> this is uphill charge on this thing and you've got masses of airspace in those 2.6 inch DHF and DHR tyres but these all these dampers so sorted, so locked down doesn't feel like a pneumatic bounce at all 
no hysteria through the dampers. This is the proper toboggan section of toboggan. Oh, let's see how she goes down here. Hey, still a lot of sliding around. But yeah, that, I mean, they were the first people to go for the super short stem, super long top tube. Survival Mondrake who followed geometry. Loads of people have copied it now, but they still do it super well. Lovely agile feel on this bike, despite its weight. And also, deliberately gone for narrower diameter bar and stem. So, even with this massive alloy, stealth alloy frame and this huge 38, R38, all these fork, it's yeah, really pleasant and kind of forgiving through the hands. Still feels like a bike you could ride all day without getting punished. But you do have to lean it in a bit more. It's quite interesting following this light down here. You can just see that's kind of tipping in, switching lines a bit more easily. I've got to kind of look at the bigger picture on this, sweep it round, but oh my lord, it's real. Like I've got grip and control for days. I feel like I could take one hand off the bars and explain things to you as I went through them. It's got that kind of confidence. Missed the wheel spray through there. Right, last down section. Give me a bit of space. <laughs> oh, I love a demo day. And coming out to wheelbase here in Stavely means you've got Properly good trails to play on. Oh. Awesome set of routes. Different routes for every ride and every rider ability. So good. So someone's being good enough to flat, which gives me a chance to have a really quick uh, tech check through on the bike. So you've got the uh, Olin's RXF38 M2 fork up front. 170 mil travel on this, that's why it's the XR, not just the Sandy Crafty R. And then you've got this massive uh, 750 watt hour battery in this, you know, this really distinctive stealth alloy frame with this super slim top tube sloping away there. There's a lovely dynamic line right the way through the bike. It's got a beautiful bit of design language to it, this beast. And also, because the way they've kind of two toned the uh, battery on it, I remember saying this on the uh, Crafty R Road. Uh, on the Nan Beeld ride uh, a couple of years ago. It, it reminds me of when uh, Boy George used to paint his neck black when he got a bit fat. And it just really kind of slims down the bike, even with that massive down tube on it. And in here, obviously, you've got the uh, Bosch uh, CX Generation 4 motor. And then look at that, Olin CTX piggyback shock, all the damping adjustment and, um, you know, motorsport race bred tech you could uh, wish for. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's a first ride, is this. There's so much tuning opportunity on these forks and... Uh, I have to say they're definitely they're definitely set up for a more aggressive rider. I've got them pretty much full open, and uh, I wouldn't like to be uh, getting a plush ride on a much light, lighter uh, setup. I wouldn't like to be trying to find a plush ride if I was a much lighter rider. But you know, so much control, and then you've got uh, Mondraker sort of DH uh, influenced zero suspension. So you've got links top and bottom there, little short linkages, top driver linkage. Uh, clamshell welded there. It's a fully aluminium frame on this bike. There is a carbon frame as well. So I've not got the scales on this. I'll put that in the caption later on. And then all one piece back end. So although it looks relatively slender in terms of uh, e-bike uh, e -bike back ends, you've got, you know, you've got a lot of cross member reinforcement. So it actually tracks and feels really, really stiff. The whole bike feels massively planted. And then you've got XO Plus uh, Minion DHR rear in Max Terra, and then Minion DHF front, and it's a 29 by 2.6 both ends. So an absolute ton of rubber uh, keeping this bike safe and attached to the ground. And in terms of control systems, you've got full Bosch smart system on the bars, so you've got that 3D adjusted. One thing I would say, that, I find that's a bit close to the uh, gubbins for the uh, the remote there. So I've struggled to find the dropper post a couple of times. And then you've got that signature super short stem. And like I say, narrow diameter bar and stem just to keep things a bit more comfy for your hands. And then you've got code, R brakes. I mean, it's the simplest of the uh, SRAM brakes. It's not quite as subtly uh, leveraged as the RS, but big fat rotors down the bottom. So plenty of stopping power. And then in terms, and then, 
In terms of uh, drivetrain, you've got a race face Aphex crank, and then you've got Shimar, we've got SRAM GX Eagle on the back. And very rarely seen thing, which I haven't talked about yet. You've got Mavic wheels, remember them? Yeah, they're back. It's great to see Mavic on a bike as original spec. And it's the uh, D-Max E, so super tough, E-specific um, mountain bike wheel, bladed spokes, you know, really distinctive fat bodied hubs. Awesome to see Mavic getting some uh, original equipment spec back. And uh, they certainly seem like they contribute to the solid feel of the bike. And uh, having run Mavic wheels on my tandem for years, I can vouch for the fact that they are properly, properly bomb proof in terms of putting up with a lot of torque. So, I think that's everybody fixed, so uh, take one last look at this beautiful bike out in the Lakeland Fells and uh, one cracking final descent with some ruts, big old drop and then a bouldery finish which I reckon this uh, crafty XR will love. And you've got all the Bosch smart system, cleverness, so oh, perfect timing case, do it on a switchback humpback bridge but you've got you know, multiple buttons set up there which takes you through your riding time your distance your battery percentage it even gives you your own power your own pedaling speed that's where you pay your smartphone back there nope and you got your different modes turbo emtv tour eco or just off and then I think after here, it gives you battery, sort of how much distance. You can set it up so it shows you what distance you've got remaining in each power setting as well. So obviously more and more bikes coming with this setup. It's not exclusive to Mondraker. But uh, yeah, they're one of the few where you can actually buy it now though. So if you're in the market for an e-bike right now, this is the way to get on Bosch early. And then you've got that massive 750 watt hour battery down there. And again, just feels so planted straight away and then you got that little half turn on the Bosch now I mean most motors have got it to be fair but that little half turn so even though it's a big bike whoa <laughs> that'll look good on the bar camera sorry chatting too much <laughs> thank you so even on this sort of slow speed rocky stuff you've got plenty of kick on if you need it but it's that mixture of stability Woo! <laughs> bottom out do you hear that yep still got the camera something based out there definitely working that big only damper but by god it feels secure and damp down here came down on uh, Scott yesterday, same descent, but it was a medium sized bike and it's just a little bit tauter and it's got an inline shock and it just felt like it was working a lot harder than this bike, but this one properly showing the quality of that damper down here, oh the chips lads, hey there we go and I got underneath and I've still got the bar cam Magnetic clip still working on there, but oh yeah, that XR and that Olin's proving its worth on this section. Absolutely, get the knee in, get that big length round. Cheers. So that's the first ride done, and I have to say, this really lives up. I chat to uh, the Cycle Active guides who were taking us round. And they were like, how do you tell? And they say, uh, you know, how do you tell when someone's on an e-bike? And they, their answer is, they're smiling. And uh, yeah, I mean, the ability to climb up fells all day long around here and then come down them with that kind of control. Uh, you know, interesting, because, you know, it's relatively slim front end, slim tubes, little head tube by massive oversized standards. I've ridden two bikes this weekend uh, with a 1.8 inch head tube. And that's, you know, that's an like old school tapered on there. But with those dampers and that geometry it's a really nice balance it still feels agile and lively it's not dead and thumping like some of the big coil bikes i've tried but so stuck down so stuck down i mean there's plenty to go at on that uh rear damper as you can see i've uh, definitely got full travel out of it on that last descent and uh, yeah full travel out the forks as well so pretty much bang on with the adjustments on that but all right mate <laughs> there's the ride coming in Look at that, see? 
Mind you, he was loving it and he wasn't on an e-bike, but he was on a Mondraker. Maybe that's the key. Maybe that's the key, but I've certainly absolutely loved this Crafty XR today. But for now, uh, massive thanks to uh, Wheelbase for having me out here for the weekend. You've missed this one if you're not here now, and obviously if you're watching this video, because I'm not going to get it edited today. But there is another demo day at Hampstead. Again, brilliant trails, superb range of bikes, and Wheelbase, you know, fantastic shop, loads of stock, expert staff. Uh, if you want to know more about the Bosch Smart System, watch the two videos I've done on that with Jack from Bosch. But for now, massive thanks to uh, Giro Cycling. Thanks to for them for sponsoring the channel. Thanks to Peaties and Crud as well. That crud guard, absolutely invaluable, uh, keeping the lens relatively clean, although I did notice a bit of spatter on the last run, so sorry about that. But yeah, I'm proper, proper excited, chattering away. Uh, thanks to my Patreon uh, subscribers who support the channel on a monthly basis, and they get exclusive, extended, and ad-free edits as a thank you. Yeah. So if you really like what I'm doing, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It's a very small monthly fee, but it really makes a difference to how much time I can spend riding bikes and talking to the camera. Uh, keep an eye out for a full written review of this bike on uh, Bike Perfect and click for notifications, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything and give it a thumbs up like and tell your mates about it. It's been great meeting loads of the people who watch the channel out here at the Dirt Demo and if you see me on the trails, please do come and say hello or just get, you know, just get lively in the comments asking about bikes, asking about your riding, whatever. I've been doing this a long old time and if there's anything I can help with, I'd be delighted to. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV on the Mondraker Crafty XR. Big battery, big hill crushing beast. Brrrp. Just a special something about the way that Mondrakers ride. They've just got a real life and liveliness to them. Even when they weigh an absolute ton like this one with the battery in. <laughs>